So uh, obviously, we're not going to be closing, John. I mean, I got two things up here. I got this sermon, which is about 20 pages long, or you know, I've got um, this, the last bit of thoughts I've just passed a couple of days, and it's about three pages. So I'm going to see. We're going to take a clap to see which one you actually want. <laughs> so you want this one, or do you want this one? All right, all right, I see where everybody's at. So um, anyways, uh, (laughs) first off, uh, just before I begin, um, who here has been uh, evacuated, displaced from their home? And they're here this Sunday. You can raise your hands a little bit higher. We've got quite a few within our midst that uh, are, are not able the last couple of nights been able to be at their home and so and obviously comes that comes in uncertainty and the unknown and anxiety and so thank you for coming this Sunday we really appreciate having you here and it's where we all really need to be at this moment and so it's uh, we're thankful that you're with us um, really what we're gonna do uh, I just have some thoughts and some scripture uh, and then we're just gonna have a time of prayer together um, and where some things that we will give you to pray for, to chat with people, because I really believe that is uh, what we need the most here today. Um, I think being in community is the most important thing with everything that's happening. Uh, is coming together on Sunday it brings a sense of normality to things. And so, uh, so I just have a couple of thoughts here, and then we will have some time of prayer. Uh, so what do we do in this time? Of need, what, what does this look like? What does this look like for everybody? What, how do how do we navigate this? How do how do we feel uh, in the midst of this? Um, one of the things that we can are to do uh, is to is to find comfort, and this is where the trust in the Lord comes in. Um, now, the trust in the Lord that we lean into, it is and it isn't this. It. It isn't this and is this trusting that all is going to be okay and that homes are going to be okay, that bad things won't happen to me. I mean, we won't believe that, but it also is not always true all the time. Um, Because we've walked this life. I'm sure for everybody here who's walked life, we've experienced some pain, we've experienced some disaster, we've experienced some discomfort, and we know that these things happen. The trust in the Lord, this finding comfort, is actually knowing that um, he'll work these things out and that actually he is with you. That's the trust that we're talking about, the finding comfort, trusting that he is with you, that he walks with you even right now, even though you feel, and we we felt the anxiety and the worry of everything that's going on, trusting that he's with you. That's the trust. There's a couple scriptures, and one's in Psalm 46, and it says this, God is our refuge and strength, and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, he will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you in my righteous right hand. So this is the trust that we're talking about in the midst of this, trusting that he is with you, leaning in next to him, knowing that he's walking with you and trusting that he will confide or he will comfort you, that he will give you peace, that uh, he will still the anxiety that is stirring up maybe within you and that he's never going to leave you, never going to forsake you. He'll always be there with you. There is a... A tornado that went through Washington, Illinois, and this reverend, he preached a sermon about the things we can't, all the things we cannot keep, which is our stuff and our lives, and the importance of clinging to something that's secure, which is Jesus, Jesus. and we cannot lose him, he's there with us. Second thing we can do is be in community, and this is the big, big thing. 
Uh, I've never really gone through a disaster like this. The closest thing I had was uh, I too grew up in a valley and there was a flood that came through our valley. It rained for two days straight and I was coming home from work and I was like, oh, come this way. And I hit uh, actually a, a, a creek that had flooded over and my car flooded right away. It was like uh, knee deep or seat deep and it just flooded and it was gone. And I was stuck and I could not get out and it, my cell phone wasn't working. And finally, after three hours, before hypothermia slipped in, uh, I was picked up by somebody, able to get home. All I wanted to do was be with people. I just wanted to be with community. I wanted to be with uh, my church family. I wanted to be with those that I know I can find strength in. I wanted to have some comfort of just people around me. And so the question we ask, right, sometimes is, what will we take with us? Hey, if you had to leave the house quickly. We've all run through this scenario. Now, for some of us, and for all of us, we've thought about this and had to prepare for this this past weekend. Uh, some of you, um, like Malachi, he, was, he had ball Friday morning, and I saw Alec there at ball. We were both there at in Kelowna Friday morning for baseball, uh, and... It was blue skies in Kelowna. And so Kim, she wanted to be close to me just in case something happened. And so she packed up some bags. Uh, she really didn't care what was in them. She just wanted to be close to me, close to somebody in community. And there were some important things in there, but what mattered what most for her was that we were close to each other, that we can be with each other. And so when we actually got home later that day, and she went to uh, Jordan and Liz Pilgrim's house, which they live in Ellison, and we were at Edith Gay, which is just off Rutland Road, so we were close just in case we had to leave and evacuate right away. Uh, and so we got home that, later that day, and we're going through the kids' bag to see what they brought. You know, this is just, what did they bring? What is most important to my kids? Because we told them, like, grab what, what you want the most and stuff like that and what you can't replace. And so in Zion's bag, there was an electrical power bar in there. <laughs> and so this was like, if I had to pack my bag and take something real quick, this was what was in there. And then there was a half full bottle of Dr. Pepper. And so <laughs> life priorities, I'm not too sure. But what it said to me was like, well, maybe this was important to Zion, but it really didn't matter to him as long as that as we were together, that we were with each other, that we were with community, that we were with the people that mattered most to us, that we were surrounded by those that loved us. Um, and so what mattered most was being in community, that everything we needed was actually already right there with us. So which is why is today so important, and so thankful that you came with us, and so thankful for those who have been displaced that you're here with us, uh, because all of scripture, as we continue to see from Christ moving forward, it's about a body of believers being together. It's about people being devoted to one another. And here, Acts 2.42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the breaking of bread. And this uh, was, throughout Acts, was just emphasized, constantly being with each other. And we see they constantly came together in times of uncertainty, in times when things felt like they were crashing in on them. Those first disciples... They found rest and comfort in community. And so even yesterday, the venters, again, they're having a sleepover with the pastor. And so this is uh, lots of fun for them. Uh, the, what mattered most, <laughs> as he laughs, uh, what mattered most, I'm, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do today, what I'm going to say today, how professional am I going to be? I need to be professional. Even though I don't look professional, I have to act professional. But what needed to be was just to be together. We just sat, we chatted, we talked about things. That's what's most important. Not maybe what I can say in 10 minutes. Souls is a need to be with people. So Hebrews 10, 24 to 25 says this, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing so, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So this is food for the soul right now. Not me sharing anything, but us being together. Now the last thing we can do in these times is look to serve. God's sovereignty, his rule, does not function to mitigate our responsibility. Because he's king doesn't mean that we don't have responsibility. 
uh, we have this responsibility of knowing the king to love one another who suffer, who are going through things. He actually calls us into this to be like him, to help bring his rule here to this kingdom or to, to this world. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And the Bible and Christ, they, he, they just beckon us to use our time, our talents, and treasure uh, to help those who are weak, those who are in need, those who are vulnerable. And Scripture is rich with examples of people doing this, like Nehemiah, when, who God used to bring about this redemption and this recovery in times of disaster. And so we excuse me, see that hope through these things I've explained, through service, through community, and comfort in Christ. And how we can help right now is just when we see a need, when something maybe approaches our door, when something comes to us that's right in front of us, we, we, we find a way to help. We find a way, how can we help in the midst of this right now? If something comes across our way. But the, really, the need is going to be long-term. It's going to be a need long-term within our community. I mean, we hear about Okanagan Center and the mayor saying homes have been lost over there. Things have changed over there. We have people who live in that space, you know, who still, I mean, we're hoping all is well and stuff like that. And people your kids have gone to school with, maybe friends that you have, they're going to be affected by this, not just in the short term, obviously, but all in the long term. And so we have short-term availability, but we have long-term need. So we have to look for ways to serve in that capacity. Now, we have this living hope with Christ. That he will be with us in the midst of this. We have this role in the midst of this to be like, how can I help and serve and love those people around me? To share that hope. As I said, a couple of weeks, we are the... The, that when it talks about people are looking to see the pierced hands and touch the side of Jesus, they do that through the activity of the church. That's how they get to know Christ. That's how they get to know who he is. So that's what I have for thoughts this Sunday. But what I think is most important now is that we take time to pray with each other. And it can start, I think it's always great to start and just, hey, how are you doing? You turn around to somebody, maybe a group of four or five, uh, turn around to somebody and ask, how are you doing? And just hear people out. Give them a space to chat. So then now you know how you could go on forward from this day praying for that person that you were just sitting next to. And then after that, you want to take some time and you want to pray for our first responders, we have firefighters in our midst. John has been out. John Baxter has been out fighting fires. Jeff Evans has been out fighting fires. Uh, my wife saw Jeff Thursday morning. They were at the mall, uh, and Jeff was there, and he's about to go to West Kelowna, and they're just chit-chatting. You know, at that moment, it didn't seem so big. I mean, there's a fire, and obviously it's a, it's a big thing, but little did each of them know at that moment what it was they were stepping into or what was going to bestow upon us. So we'll pray for our first responders. We'll pray for those who have been displaced, and some in your group might be displaced. So when you ask them how they're doing, they're going to tell you maybe how they're doing and how they're feeling. So you'll have perfect opportunity to pray right into that. And the last thing is we want to pray for those who actually lost homes. You might know somebody who's actually lost a home. You might know somebody who is um, really struggling with the, in the midst of this. So we want to take time to pray for those people. So I'm going to invite Sarah and Jack to come on up. And they're just going to play softly for the next, oh, 10 minutes here. Um, and I encourage you, as she begin, after I pray, I encourage you to turn to somebody and begin to have that moment and chat with them and then pray with one another. And it could, like, conversation is okay. It's okay. There's beauty in, in, in the openness, chatting with people. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, uh, 
we recognize this is a different Sunday. Lord, we recognize there's lots going on. Lord, this is brings up a sense of normality to things. Lord, as we gather together and we see people that we know and that we get to worship you and we get to experience your presence in a mighty way when we gather together. And Lord, we know there's beauty in that. That you work within our, heart, our hearts, you work within our souls. Lord, that you begin to change things. Lord, that you refresh us. Lord, that you um, give us a, a peace that passes all understanding. So Lord, as we take these next 10 minutes to be the community, to chat with those around us, to pray together, uh, we pray that it does something within our countenance, it does something within the atmosphere. And again, Lord, we pray for these fires to stop, Lord. We pray that you would push back against this. Jesus, we pray for rain. Lord, we pray for all these things uh, to happen, Lord. But there's, as your believers gather together and they begin to minister to one another, well, that's what the church is all about. I don't have magic words to say, Jesus. But your presence and your peace, it is all that we need. Your people together speaks volumes to everything that we desire. So Lord, we thank you. You're bigger. that we can lean into you, and Lord, that you lead us and guide us. So again, we pray for all those affected. We ask that you would bring them peace. And Lord, we pray for this time as we enter into it, that it will bring life. In your name we pray, amen. So yeah, I just want you to turn to somebody in your pew or somebody behind you uh, and uh, just have a moment. Uh, to chat, to ask how they're doing, and to pray with one another. Father, we thank you so much for the body. Lord, that we can come together, and Lord, we can encourage one another, that we can be, Lord, uh, an image of you to somebody else, Lord, as they talk about everything that they're experiencing, everything they're going through in the uncertainty. That's what being your hands and feet's about. Lord, that's what... You know, and Thomas wanted to see the marks on the hand. He wanted to touch the side. Lord, we can't do that physically now, Lord, but the church is that now. We're saying, look at Jesus. Look at him. We're saying, do that through us. So these moments help people to turn to Christ. So, Father, we pray for everybody in this room. We pray for those that we know, Lord, we, that have lost Lord, their homes, Lord, we pray that you would comfort them. Lord, we pray that uh, you would surround them with people who can um, support them amazingly, Lord. We pray that if they don't know you, Lord, that there's people in their life that will help to show them um, that life with Christ is everything that they're actually searching for. And it's irreplaceable. And it's all that we need. Lord, we thank you for those within our midst who have opened up their homes, who have given people a space to stay, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are still evacuated from their homes, that you would give them peace, Lord, in the midst of this. Lord, as they have some with kids and some on their own, uh, Lord, that uh, you would help them through the whatever situation they're working through. So Lord, you're good. Even though we face something that seems so broken, but your goodness comes that you're with us in the midst of it. That we can draw close to you, Father. And then we can help others find that peace in the midst of uncertainty. So again, Lord, we thank you for this time that we have together. We pray that it was food for the soul. We pray that it was exactly what everybody needed. Lord, I ask that you continue to lead us and guide us as we go through this week.